Welcome to Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Well, as we take a look at the Day Weather Podcast today, want to highlight that the weather is going to just be fabulous through Friday. Wow, wasn't yesterday amazing for November? And we're going to have more of those days coming for the next four days. Big change, though, remains unscheduled by the weekend. It's one of those foregone conclusions. It's not if the weather will change. It will. It's just a matter of how much snow and how cold it gets and how much of a change it's going to be, but a change is coming. The longer term looks colder and it looks more unsettled. I think for the rest of November, we're going to be in a colder regime in the western high plains and Rockies. The Pacific sea surface temperature patterns favor a colder regime. It favors more frequent cold fronts, more frequent storm systems. That's not to say we're still going to have some warmer periods in between the cold fronts, but not as warm as we have seen since early September, where we have these Arctic fronts, then all of a sudden we go back to unseasonably warm and dry again. We're going to see less of that and more in the way of a more typical November pattern. Here we are, we're at the jet stream today, a more what we call zonal west to east flowing jet stream pattern across the United States. This is a pretty quiet weather pattern. This little wave right here will make it a little bit more windy later today and Wednesday as it crosses the divide, but it's really not going to do much. The main branch of the jet stream is way up into Canada. All the cold air right now is locked up to the north. So most of the country going to be more mild here over the next few days. By Thursday, notice things get more amplified. We've got a kink there in the Gulf of Alaska. The jet stream, though, is still zonal, so it's still going to stay warm through Friday with this pattern. However, by Friday afternoon, we see the low digging into the Pacific Northwest. Big ridge, big, big ridge builds up into the Gulf of Alaska and eastern areas of the Pacific. So we know the story. When this happens, when you get a high here, you're going to get a low in the west, you're going to get a high in the southeast, so that just funnels, follow the flow of the air, that funnels the cold air back into the western United States. So the table is getting set for a much colder weather pattern. This is by Sunday. We've got a low up into eastern Montana, another low that's going to want to come and dig towards the Four Corners area. This is going to make a difficult forecast for snow for the western high plains and Rockies. I think the snow in terms of where it's going to be the heaviest over the course of the next five to seven days, that's a little bit up in the air because when you get a split pattern like this, you'll tend to get a big snow event up here. And then this little guy, this low comes into the Four Corners area and can become sometimes sneaky and end up producing more snow than is currently forecasted there. But the definite message here is a big trough coming into the west, that eastern Pacific Ridge and then that other ridge along the east coast. Basically, when you have bookends of high pressure like this, you're just going to keep the low. You're going to keep the weather unsettled, bottled up in the western states. And that's what we see going into the weekend. That's what we see going into next week. This is what the precipitation looks like. Again, I think this will change. If you don't see a lot of precipitation in areas like here or here, it doesn't mean it won't happen. But right now, we certainly are going to see significant moisture in the Pacific Northwest. And look at California. Even California Sierras could see some really good snow, maybe even some rain in parts of California, Arizona. Look at Southwest and Central Mountains of Colorado getting into the act. The Wasatch Front of Utah getting into the act. This is the type of change in the weather pattern that builds up the snowpack. It puts that first really good solid layer of snowpack in the mountains. So for you skiers, maybe worried that we're not going to be able to get the ski season started because this warm up, well, don't think you need to worry. We're going to see lots of snow heading into the mountains, the Tetons, the Wind Rivers, the Yellowstone Plateau, all getting into the Act, Sun Valley, the Bitterroot, and up into northwest areas of Montana. These are temperatures by Monday relative to normal. We still have warm air in the southern plains by Monday morning, but certainly all of the high plains and Rockies. And look at even this pocket of cold back into Nevada and into California. So this wave of cold really comes in and settles on in. Out to 15 days, looking all the way up to the 19th of November, notice we still have a high pressure ridge in the eastern Pacific. The tendency is for the troughiness to be in the west. So we're going to have more frequent periods of unsettled weather coming in to the western states. Does not look like we're going to go back to unseasonably warm and dry after this wave of cold. That's been the trend this fall. 
gets cold, it gets stormy for a couple of days, then we go back to warm and dry. Doesn't look like that's going to happen this time around. One reason for that, the sea surface temperature pattern in the Pacific is poised to give us more cold outbreaks. Why do we say that? Well, we've got La Nina here, these cold sea surface temperatures, and then we've got this warm pocket in the Gulf of Alaska. When you're cold along the subtropics here with La Nina, and we have this warm pocket of water relative to average, the high pressure ridges wanna build in the Eastern Pacific. That causes that Eastern Pacific high to form at times, causing those colder outbreaks to come on in for the rest of November into early December. As long as that warm pocket persists, there will be more cold outbreaks. We'll be watching this to see if this colder patch grows over time. And if we'll see also over time, if this part of the Pacific gets colder relative to average for the rest of the winter season. Interesting things to look at. North American snow extent in the fall, the North American content of snowfall, the snow extent of fall snows in the Northern Hemisphere since 1967, believe it or not, the trend line is up and it's up this year. In fact, at times it went up to like this. So it may be contrary to what you think, but North American snow cover in the fall season, actually the trend line since the late 60s has been up. And so far this year, look at this. This is the Northern Hemisphere snow cover as of the 1st of November. You can see the snow cover has really increased in Siberia, in Canada, Greenland. So you're going to be building the cold. So this was after a pretty warm Arctic summer, low sea ice, but all of that's going to be changing very, very rapidly as snow cover, the Northern Hemisphere snow cover is above average. Here we are into early November, and we're going to start to see that impact as going through the rest of the month and into early December. Talk to you on Wednesday. Have a good Tuesday.